Hey, what's up guys? Thank you so much for watching another one of my videos. Um, as you all know, my name is Captain Steve. Um, I want to do this video today and kind of just walk you guys through, you know, pretty basic functions and things to do when you're fishing for sturgeon. Um, I get a lot of questions about that. Uh, obviously, I've had some good, get some good success in the past month or so or whatnot in the past you know everybody knows that i catch sturgeon um it's not all that easy like it seems um believe it or not i i have my moments where i don't catch anything at all but uh want to just just go over a few things just kind of help you guys out a little bit uh, it can be a really really intimidating fish to go after it's really frustrating you can sit on that on, on that you know on that spot for hours you can mark fish um and they just won't bite you know it's just there's a reason they call it the fish of a thousand hours um like i said in my previous video i was fortunate enough that i had a lot of help all these years you know as a kid from all the way till now i'm almost 40 years old all right so i've had the pleasure to work with a lot of great captains a lot of great fishermen um a lot of good friends of mine that fish a lot of influence on how i fish from a lot of these guys um even as far as is making sturgeon leaders you know like you guys ever heard of hippo um his knots are pretty one of a kind um he was really helpful in helping me make all these things and teach me so i thank him a lot um his guidance helped a lot in all this process but anyhow uh before we get into the video you guys are gonna see as I am, um, as I get in the boat, um, we start heading out. Uh, what I didn't cover in this little video, but I'm gonna just, just just go over it in person with you guys. Is you guys get out there? You obviously know there's a general area where the fish are being caught, whether it's in the Delta, whether it's Pittsburgh, Martinez, the South Bay, San Pablo Bay, um, Sonoma Creek, Napa River, all that. You have an idea of where to go. Okay, obviously you're gonna go out there. You're gonna find the charter boats. Okay. Now these charter boats are fishing these, these spots because they've been doing it for years. They're well experienced captains. Um, one of the main things that I'll tell you right now before we get into it, you see a charter boat or, or any boat in general just fishing, please slow down. If you guys think about it, if you're passing through at full speed, I'm on anchor and you fly right by me with all this open water to go by, I'm marking fish that are underneath the boat. No. It doesn't matter if it's 10, 20, 30, 40 feet, whatever. All that noise, it travels down. And guess what? It spooks them, okay? So now you pass me up and you think that's a great spot. You anchor up in front of me, behind me, to the left of me. You just scared all those fish away. So you're not doing nothing but hurting yourself and hurting us. So what I would say, you want to fish around us? Hey, we don't own the water. I'm not going to tell you, no, you can't fish in front of me, behind me, whatever. Just have a little space. Um, you can be a little courteous. And like I said in some of my other videos and this video, you don't wanna be that guy. Don't be that guy, okay? Um, no one likes that guy. <laughs> so anyways, um, like I said before, I go out there and I'll look for fish, you know? And uh, like I said, these things are like cows. They like to graze, they like to, like to feed in a single area, in a single line. I'll make a pattern. I'll go back and forth, you know, left and right until I find it a certain depth where I find these fish. It can be 20 feet, you know, and I'll, I'll work my way down to five feet, all the way to 10 feet. And if I see a consistent line where these things are, are constantly feeding and they're on the bottom, you know, you don't want the fish that are suspended, as I'll put in these pictures and in the videos here, you want the fish that are on the bottom, okay? Those are the ones that you want to stop on. Now, some people ask me, do you stop right on top of them? Do you stop ahead of them? What do you do? Well, like I said, you're making your pattern in your boat. You're marking fish left and right. You see that they're in a consistent line. If they're in one spot at, at, at 20 feet, they're going to keep being on that same line. So, you know, either you go ahead of them a little bit or you go back to that spot, but they're going to keep coming. Um, anchor up, you know, and start fishing. Now, uh, a really big part of this is scent. You, you'll see, I, I put, I put pro care in my hands. It smells, don't get me wrong. It reeks to high hell. Okay, um, there's like, this whole weekend, I had it on my hands, my hands are dry as hell. It's like sandpaper, you know? But 
guess what? In the morning, I have my coffee. I'll have, you know, it's a, whatever it is, a sandwich, breakfast sandwich, peanut butter and jelly. Um, I'm touching that stuff. I'm eating that stuff, you know? And I'm having my coffee, you know, it's got caramel on it or whatever. All that crap gets on my hands. Now, what happens if I touch that bait and that stuff's on my hands? Now, that's gonna get on to the actual bait and if a sturgeon smells something like that, they're, they're gonna be like, what the hell is this stuff? It's not natural to them. So that's why I put it on. You don't have to, you know, you still catch without it, but that's just one of the things I do. Um, always use good gear. Uh, don't sell yourself short with some cheap, you know, some cheap crappy leaders, some cheap line. Uh, don't go under gun. Make sure you have the right gear, um, the right rods. I'm using, a variation of rods, the Kuma PCHs, the 761s, uh, the 761Ms, which are mediums, the 801 medium heavies. I have I have my custom deadliest cast uh, murder stick. This one right here. This is a custom rod that nobody else has for me. <laughs> but uh, this is pretty much. It's uh, I believe it's it's a 15 and 25 pound rod. This was made for me a couple of years ago. Um, and uh, it's really soft, really light. It is, um, I believe it's a super seeker. Um, and uh, it is very light and is very responsive, you know. It's very parabolic, has a soft tip. Um, let's see if I can kind of show you that from here. You can see every little bite out there. Okay. So I don't know if you can kind of see this, but I should have done this in the boat, but anyhow, I want to show you guys. So, you guys see that tip, just very slight. I feel everything on this rod, okay? So, all right, I almost forgot. One last thing before we get to the video. Um, I wanted to show you guys how I rigged this up. So I'm gonna cut this down, okay? Got my pit bull cutters, cut the line. Again, that is 65 pound braid I'm using, okay? I like the high vis colors because I usually have multiple lines out on the water and I want to see exactly what's going on. Um, when we are hooked up, people always ask me, if we hook up, should we reel all the lines up? No, we should not, not unless I tell you to. But I like to leave them out because you never know, you might hook a second fish, hook a third fish, who knows? We've had double hookups before. You know, I've seen up to triple hookups. It just, it, it happens, you know, um, very possible. So when we're hooked up, you know, I guide people, point that rod to the right, point the rod to the left, kind of keep the rod away or the fish away from the other lines. So that way you do have a chance of catching other fish. So let's, uh, let's rig this up real quick. Let me show you guys what it is I do here. Okay, nothing crazy. I know it's just very, really simple. You got your braid, okay? Get your slider, slide that thing right through, okay? Now you get your bead. Doesn't matter what color bead it is, put the line through the, through the bead, okay? Now you get your uh, your swivel. This is, again, this is from Pitbull Tackle. It's a ball bearing swivel. It's heavy duty, a couple hundred pounds, if not more, okay? Put the line right through that, okay? I'm just gonna make a simple loop. Lower this a little bit. Make a simple loop, okay? We'll pinch one end of it there, like that, okay? Let's see, make a loop. We'll pinch it at the end, and we'll grab the tag in. I'm gonna go over my finger once, like that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. You can do as many wraps as you want. Now I'm gonna open up that loop again, right there. Put that line right through. Pull it. Now put that other the tag in through that other loop that was on your finger. Okay, put it right through. We'll grab it. Let's we'll start pulling down on this. You can wet it, whatever you want, you know. 
Now you see as I'm pulling, it's getting tighter and tighter, right? I'll pull real tight and we wrap this around my hand. Be careful when you guys do this. Because the braid will cut you. I'm kind of kind of used to it, you know? But as you see, now that is a pretty good knot, okay? Call it San Diego Jam Knot, Clinch Knot, whatever you want to call it. That's what I use. You go ahead and cut that tag in off. Okay. And that's pretty much that, okay? So you got that all rigged up. Your weight's gonna go on here on the slider, okay? And I'll put the info for Arts Custom Sliders in here. Um, open up your swivel. Now, if you can't open this up that easy, or if you can open up your swivel easy, you're using the wrong one, okay? Beef it up. Put your swivel through that barrel swivel on your leader. Now you're fishing, okay? So there's your leader, your swivel, your bead, and your slider. Now you're ready to fish, all right? All right, let's get to the video, enjoy it. I'll see you guys at the end. morning everybody today we're gonna we're going fishing for sturgeon so i'm gonna try to do the best i can and give you a walkthrough on how to target these things um get the boat fired up crew's ready to go got the guys getting ready in the back got joe getting ready over there look at the beautiful san francisco bay let's see what surprises it has for us today all right we're about ready to go it's like a beautiful morning in the bay See if we can get some uh, some dinos on the boat. See all that? Those are all sturgeon in the Alright. So as you see things are really relying on scent and smell. Put some of this stuff on my hands. Get rid of some of this unnatural scent we have on. I think it's smelly. Smell that. Smell that. Whoa, That's a skunk. Yeah. What happened? She charges about 40 bucks an hour. Who's that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's what Joe said anyway. I don't know. <laughs> we got our miracle thread here. Gonna help our bait out. Eights and sixes or eights and tens? Got some fresh ghosties. And we're just gonna get the ghost shrimp surgeon leader. Put that right there's face. Right down him. Just kind of thread it through the body. Just like that. Okay, we're gonna get our, our thread. Just wrap this bad boy up so it doesn't fall off when we cast. And helps the smaller critters not take it off. And we're gonna get a second one. 
on here. Let's get a third one. So the idea is you want to make these things want to eat this bait. If you're putting one shrimp, it's not going to happen. What do you think, Joe? I think three sounds good. Three is an odd number. Let's go for Go bigger, go home. Go bigger, go home. All right. I'm just tie a little go ahead knot. What? That is a sturgeon bait. I got the sinker on the slider, swivel, you leader. And uh, let's fire this thing out. We're gonna hold that and push the cast it up. So what we got here is a seeker. It's one of the many one of the many rods in the arsenal. It's a 196.7. And uh, 65 pound braid on her. And that's the first one. You know what to do already. Let's get the next one rigged up. That's a sturgeon bait right there. 150 pound murdered out leader. <laughs> right in the drink. There you go, sir. Thank you. You are fishing. So you guys see that right there. Those are all good marks in the bottom. There's sturgeon, one right there, one right there. Just scroll back, there's one there. This is a little different than my unit. I use Ray Marines, but we haven't installed those yet on this boat, on the Barbarossa, but they still work. Um, yeah, that's what you wanna look for. So what I generally do is I'll go out and look around, look for different spots, and try to find a consistent line of fish that are on the bottom, like what we're seeing here. You want the fish that are on the bottom, not suspended. Like these little things here and here, those could be, you know, off to the side, left and right, but we want the bottom one just like that. That one's glued to the bottom right there. That's what we're looking for, okay? So. Let's see what happens. The rods are out. Let's see if we can get some fish on, on the deck. You're on? Negative? Yeah, you're on. Fish on. Hold this. Just leave it. I got it. Want to go in front of the rod? What do we do with our keep the rod? No, no, you're, you're fine for now. You're fine for now. Just be ready to work around if you need to. Alright. Well, we get some we get some doubles sometimes, so. Feel good? Yeah. Just like that. That's how you guys get it get it in. <laughs> you got past that the hook that was? Yep. What you want? Yeah. Lift your rod up, lift your rod up, lift your rods up guys. Give them some room. Let them go under you. Yeah, D, what do we got? Got some fish? fish, babe. All right, get a good shot here. Yeah. Walk them to me, okay? Put your rod in the water. There you go. One the right. He's underneath the boat. He's coming back. Pay attention to your rods, guys. You guys, you guys yeah. might get bit, okay? Very possible you can get a, a double hookup. <laughs> it was underneath the boat. Yeah. 
No, I know he splashed up on this side. You guys notice what he's doing there. He's keeping pressure on that fish. He's pointing that rod in direction. He wants to turn that fish. So the fish wants to go to the right. He's turning that rod to the left, making that fish come right to him. Point the rod under the water. He goes under. So if the fish wants to go into the boat, you point the rod in the water and just wait till it comes back out. We've been on anchor for 10 minutes and we're hooked up already. Let's see what a difference the weather does and the bite. They don't like that windy, nasty weather. Yeah, quit playing with this thing, dude. I would have had him in already. <laughs> we only got like 20 minutes of battery of memory card left. Turn him. Coming up. Not coming. Lift up slowly. Yeah. Yeah. Right, give me some slack. So <laughs> always, once you net a fish, you want to give the rod some slack. Yes. Otherwise, you can break a rod, and that's not fun, okay? So now that the fish is in there, I'm going to grab the net. Just the net, not the actual frame. Lift it up. And we got a fish on board. All right. Yeah. All right. All right. Warning. Warning. All right, so. Gonna measure it from the nose. Fork, right? The fork. Where are we at? 48. That's 48. 48 exactly. Just straight them up. Okay, 49. 49? Cool. Right on, baby. Yee! Okay. So we got his tags here. We're just gonna simply put on the tags here, the month is one, right? This is his date. Today, it's the 23rd. 23rd. Two, three, the location code, okay? We're gonna black out the month. And that by no means is a racial term. No pun intended, I'm assuming. Date, the time, 8.30 a.m. We're also gonna block out the actual date here. 23rd, okay? And then up above here, where's the sturgeon fishing pork card, uh, sturgeon retained. He did keep one, so one, date, 23, location code, and the lane. The term is 49, okay? Now, we just gotta cut this off. I can find a knife. Back, back. We get the bubble blade. zip tie through it okay now we're gonna go attach this to the fish now we got our buddy here he's a little little concussed we're gonna get our knife make a hole through his lip okay put the tag and the zip tie through it Now he is tagged. Let's get the leash out. Where's the leash? Just gonna put the rope right through his mouth. There's gills.
Stringer through. That's a stringer, guys. Yeah. Okay. We're gonna cut right back here. You guys wanna take a look? Get closer. This white membrane right here, I don't know if you guys can see it. Behind the gills, right there, that's where we're gonna cut. Right in there. You're gonna see the instant red wine pour out. It's not Carlo Rossi, it's uh, Isla Nublar Prime. I know you feel that one. I feel it too. So just like that, it can be done really quick. So we bled it, it's cut, it's bleeding, it's in the water. Got the red wine pouring out. Got all the blood come out of this thing. Yeah, red wine for the mando rod. Yep. See the next one. What can I say? It's been ten minutes. This shit's faster than DoorDash. <laughs> All right, so it's uh, we've been an hour. We've been fishing, but look at those marks on the screen. Solid marks on the bottom, stacked up. Okay. So, that's what we want to see. We got some fish coming through here. So, we got one down. Need to get some more. Check that out. For shallow water, too. 52 degree water. So generally, I like to fish in a little warmer water. Um, 50 and up, it's pretty good. I think their metabolism speeds up. They want to eat a little bit more aggressively. Look at these marks, guys. These are solid marks right there. There's some big fish cruising through, eating. It's your, you got a trained eye. You can see those bites. It's uh, very distinct. Let's have Darius explain how his bite was. How was the bite on that fish? The bite was like, that's it. Really soft, really subtle. And it's not what you think, you know, your traditional pump, pump, pump. It's not, it's, check out this badass rod here. You can't really see it in the sun though, but. I think he's not wearing his helmet today. <laughs> now that right there is a monster. That is a pig right there. Whew. Another one behind it. All right, so the tide has turned. We are fishing the incoming tide now. Um, waiting for another fish to bite. So, let's we'll see what happens. We got four rods out. Hopefully we can get one more fish. Let's try something different. Let's see if we can go live. Get some questions in from people. All right, so this video took a lot longer than I thought. Um, a lot of detail, a lot of editing, so. Um, I put on Instagram, but if you guys have some questions, you guys go ahead and share them on the post and I'm going to answer some of them right now. So, all right. The first one is from El Gordito underscore 89. It says how to pick a bank spot for sturgeon. So you fish with sturgeon in, in, on a boat, they're two different things, but, uh, generally you want to just go where you know they're being caught. You know, it's hard to really just pick a spot from the shore. Um, I've caught them from like Eckley Pier, uh, Sonoma Creek, up in San Pablo Bay, up in Hercules, in San Mateo near the bridge. Um, generally, like if there's a herring spawn, 
that's a good place. You know, you wanna get in the middle of that herring spawn. So if they spawn at Coyote Point, there's herring there. Just get a cast net, get some herring, and just cast it right back out. Uh, that's pretty simple right there. Let's see, let's go to the next one. The next question is, let's see what this one says. Knock nav 94, the structure you look for. Okay, it says, it says incoming tide or outgoing tide, strong current or slow current. So structure, this isn't like rockfish. Um, you just gotta, like I said in the video, you gotta search for them. Use your, uh, your sonar on your fish finder and just look for a, a consistent line of fish, you know, wherever they're at. I've never really looked for structure. As far as tides, incoming, outgoing tide, I've gotten them on both. It says when they're hungry, they're hungry. Um, but yeah, every, you know, every situation is a little different. Um, some places I catch better on incoming tide. Some places I do better on outgoing, but that's all personal preference. I know a lot of it's in my head. Um, there's some of my close friends that went on fishing for these things and and they know I'm itching to go somewhere else on the outgoing tide because I've, I've done better there. Um, you know, they always tell me, just, just trust your gut, just go. You know, we've done it, we got some fish, but I've also fished some areas that, um, that I do really well on the opposite tide, you know? Uh, a few years ago, I took Matt's uh, Fisherman's Life to one of the spots I like to fish. And generally I fished that spot on the outgoing tide, but I took him on the incoming and he caught his fish. So it's just a matter of when these things want to eat, you know? Um, I still haven't figured that out. Um, when I do, that'd be good. So let's go to the next one. Who's this from? Let's see, next question. All right, this is a good one. So, uh, Big John underscore 48 says the cure. I responded with, what cure? So, I know what he's talking about. There's a lot of guys that have all these cures for real. And somebody else underneath asked that. It said, uh, what's going on with the salmon row cures for sturgeon of fish in the Delta? And that is from the Delta hook set. Um, so, the, the, the whole sturgeon row, there's a bunch of different, different theories about it, different cures. I have no idea. I don't use that stuff. I'm fishing in the bay where it's salt water. Um, I'd like to know. I'd like to try it sometimes, see if it works. But unfortunately, where I'm fishing, there's no there's no salmon, you know? Um, not that I know of. But uh, I've heard different things, you know? I've heard some people put brown sugar in it, borax, you know, you name it. Um, Man, all kinds of stuff. I've heard all <laughs> kinds of crazy stories. Um, I've heard powdered uh, Gatorade. <laughs> uh, who knows? You know, I don't. I, I couldn't answer that. You know, if I knew, I, if you guys know, hit me up and let me know because I don't know it. Um, but uh, let's go to the next question. Next question is this one is from Christian Bratt. This is one of the biggest things I wonder still are the title, are the title impacts. Are Sturgeon really just looking for removing water? All right, I, I think I get what he's trying to say. You know, not just movement. I've heard between six and 60 ounces, the whole bottom, and that could mean anything. All right, so with Sturgeon, they're really, they're big. They're big dinosaurs. They're, they don't like moving too much. If you ever seen them like in the aquarium, they just kind of just chill. Like you go to Monterey Bay Aquarium and just watch them. They do very little effort to move around. Um, I think once once they hit a good current, a good tide, and a good outgoing tide, they kind of just hop in that, that little stream, that little jet stream of, uh, of flowing water, and just cruise with it. You know, it's a good way for them to move around and not use a lot of energy. Um, but once you hook them, they have a lot of energy. Uh, as far as the whole six to 16 ounce thing, that right there, I would say is just depending on how deep you're fishing. If you're fishing shallow water, you know, and the tide's ripping, you can get away with eight ounces. But if you're fishing like up in, in the Delta, they're fishing 30, 40, 50 feet. 
and it's a, it's a huge tide. Those guys are throwing 16 ounces. I know the guys from, uh, it was a gate crasher at Zach and Virginia. They're always throwing some heavy stuff out there, fishing deep. Um, I've done it before when I worked on, on Flash. We, we fish Ozol and yeah, we're using 16 ounce weights. That's not fun. <laughs> you know, there's fish down there, but it's just, imagine casting a 16 ounce weight. That sucks. But anyhow, that's pretty much what that means using the six to 16 ounce weights. It's just whatever it takes to hold the bottom. You know, you're, you're obviously fishing in the bottom. You're fishing in the shallow area, you, you can get away with lighter. I know Paul, um, Boss Hog likes to fish really light, like six, like five ounces sometimes. And he's fishing like 10, 15 feet. And there is an advantage of that. You know, when the weight's so light, they don't feel that, all that pressure on, their, on the bait. Um, and you can just really see every bite, you know? But depending on the rod, do you have to have a light rod. You have a, you know, a really heavy broomstick rod. It's gonna really affect you. So you might have to go a little heavier, you know? Um, so just make sure you guys have the right gear. Let's see what else we got here. What's the next one? Do one more before we end this video. I don't want to make it too long. We're going to a live session on these days. And um, you guys can ask away. Our soul of the day. I guess that's how you say our soul of the day. It says, uh, uh, what's a good, what's, what's a good, what's a good simple recipe towards the end once you've got one? With the fire emoji. So the recipe that I like to use that you've seen and you'll see time and time again is the one I learned from Kyle at Lane's Bait. It's the Baja Citrus. That shit is fire. That, yeah, you heard it. That's good stuff. Um, I've, I've grilled it. I smoked some recently. Um, I've even put that same, same recipe like on ribs, tri-tip. It's just, it's a good recipe. It comes in a little package. Um, okay, help. But um, anyways, but yeah, it's pretty good stuff. Uh, it's really simple, you know, a little vinegar, a little water, you know, a little honey or agave, just kind of make it stick. Um, you have the powder, add your fish, just put it in the bag you know, overnight. Uh, the longer you let it soak, the better, and just grill it, you know. And like I tell everybody else, just make sure you cut that red meat out of, the, out of your, your fillets and don't overcook the fish, you know. If that fish turns into like rubber, you've overcooked it. Um, or you do like we did for the sandwich on the Bowataku. You did a panko breading and you fried it, made a surgeon panko or, or katsu sandwich, you know. It's it's really good. But uh, anyhow, like I said, we'll continue more of these questions on, on a live session on Instagram. Uh, hope you guys enjoy the video and I hope to see you guys out in the water. And remember, the key word, which is don't be that guy. All right, all right guys, hope you guys get some knowledge from this and it helps you a little bit, helps you catch some fish. And um, do you wanna learn some more? Just go ahead and book a trip. You can spend the whole day with me and you can pick my brain all you want. But uh, I gotta finish editing this video so you guys can watch this video. Make sure you guys like it, subscribe, all that other good stuff. Hit the notification bell. And uh, yeah, we'll see you in the water. All right, you're out of here. Later. Don't be that guy. Yeah, guys, I'm gonna ride.